Welcome to Presidential Fight Club, the show that answers the question, if all 44 presidents fought each other one-on-one, who would win? Hosted by two history professors who have too much time on their hands, Scott Rank and James Early. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Presidential Fight Club. We're now going to look at the second fight in our first round of the Northeastern Regional, and that is Millard Fillmore versus Martin Van Buren. James, are you ready for this? I am ready to rock and roll. Okay, two presidents that are not very well known at all, especially Millard Fillmore, who really is the essence of someone's name you came across, and you would have absolutely no other knowledge about him besides that. We're going to unpack some information about Millard Fillmore and Martin Van Buren as well. James, tell us about Millard Fillmore and what you think he brings to the fight. All righty. Millard Fillmore, who's famous for being obscure, <laughs> the most the most unknown president. Millard Fillmore was about average size for that time. Uh, he was five foot nine and of average weight. He wasn't really particularly thin, nor was he really, really heavy. He had no military experience except for uh, he well, this was later, but we're doing these when they're about 35 or so. But during the Civil War, he raised a regiment of over 45 year old men, but they didn't really see any combat. It was more like a, a social club. But I will say this Fillard, uh, Fillard, Fillard Millmore, I can't even say his name right. Millard Fillmore uh, grew up in rural New York and in a pretty poor family. And he did lots and lots of farm work, and then his father apprenticed him, and then he did lots and lots of manual labor. His his master, when he was an apprentice, just worked him to death. And then later he, he went on to uh, study the law and became a lawyer and then went into politics. But Fillmore, uh, so he, he must have been a very strong man to, to do a lot of farm chores as a young man. He, he definitely was not a, a softy or a man uh, famous for uh, being privileged. But at the same time, we don't have any knowledge of him being particularly active with anything like wrestling or boxing or uh, anything that might aid him in this fight other than the fact that he just had strength and he had determination to make it. Okay. Well, that's a good summary. I'm going to explain why Martin Van Buren should be able to win. This is tough. I feel like I'm an announcer for the Cincinnati Reds or the Phillies where I should support them, but in my heart, I know I'm going to have an uphill battle. Martin Van Buren is a class of gentlemen amongst the early presidents like John Adams, John Quincy Adams. I call foppish dandies. These guys with, although they don't wear wigs, you would imagine a pampered British man with wigs and powder on his face and decadent lifestyle. Martin Van Buren is five foot six. He is the only president who did not speak English as his first language. He spoke Dutch. As my Grodenboom uncles would say, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. What he does bring is that he did have a hard life when he grew up. He grew up in New York. The Van Burens were a struggling family with six children in the household. And Martin leaves the household pretty early. Well, he leaves school at age 14. His father gets him a position at a lawyer's office as a law clerk, and he sweeps floors. He runs errands. But when he gets to the White House, well, first, when he's a politician, his true ability is um, sneakiness and manipulating elections. He's called the little magician or the red fox for his ability to manipulate and mastermind elections. And these are in some of the proto-political machines in New York in the 1830s. So in terms of masterminding other people, and if he were to be the brains of an operation and someone else were the muscle, then he could really win. But In his temperament, he loved the fancier things. He was an ambassador to England and loved the royal lifestyle and parties. And he tried to bring this sense to the White House. And Davy Crockett described him as someone laced up in corsets, such as a woman wear. It would be difficult to say from his personal experience whether he was a man or a woman. So he brings sneakiness to the fight, but in a head-on match, um, it's hard for me to argue my case. So there I stand. James, who won between our two contenders? I was going to say one thing. Uh, There's two tricks that Van Buren could try. He had these impressive sideburns that stuck way out. Oh, right. Maybe he could slap Fillmore with his sideburns, huh? (laughs) That's one way to Uh, do it. Or just get him blind him by sticking them in his face. Fillmore was clean shaven. Uh, Or he could shout something in Dutch and throw off Fillmore, you know, like, like, I don't know. (laughs) He'd go, what? And then smack him. I don't know, but... 
Uh, the advantage goes, according to the voters of American History Fanatics, advantage Fillmore. Fillmore won this one pretty handily, primarily due to his, uh, his physical strength and his height advantage. He had much better reach. Van Buren was a teeny weeny little guy. Right. He's, um, doesn't really bring much. And I think as you described there, uh, Fillmore is, um, what we don't know about him. I I would say that it's almost by default that he's able to be uh, superior in this contest. And I think, uh, he had a pretty hard upbringing too, didn't he? Uh, oh, Fillmore. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, the, what, what I was saying earlier is he, uh, he had to do really hard labor on the farm where he grew up. And then when he was apprenticed, uh, his master that he was apprenticing under treated him very much like a slave and just made him do lots of manual labor. He didn't learn a whole lot of uh, skilled uh, craftsman kind of stuff, you know. OK, so sort of like Abraham Lincoln, except instead of opposing slavery, he supports it. So maybe by being treated by a slave, he thought he would pay it forward in the policies he supports. So yeah, bad president, knows. but at least in this fight, Millard Fillmore has something to be proud of. He does, and he wins, and Van Buren takes a seat. Okay, well, that was the second fight in round one. Kennedy is in round one, but he is seated, so he automatically leaps up to round two. Our next fight in round one is Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge versus Chester A. Arthur. Thanks for listening to Presidential Fight Club. If you'd like to download your own printable bracket sheets for each regional tournament so you can guess how the tournament will go, check out presidentialfightclub.com. We'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for listening, and may you fight with the stamina of Teddy Roosevelt, the courage of George Washington, and the reach of Abraham Lincoln.